This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we are going to go back to the Monticello repeater site that we've been rebuilding now for several weeks. And we're going to install a packet radio and another repeater. We've got big plans for this site, and this begins the process. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, what are we installing this time around? Well, we took out of the old shack, which we'll show you a little bit later. You can see how dilapidated the old shack was. We had a packet radio in the old shack, and it's been sitting on a shelf waiting for us to get the new shack, the new, ant uh, the new tower, well, the newly restored tower, so to speak, get all the old cable, old antennas off, the new anchor posts. And then we can now start reinstalling the repeaters and packet systems that were in the old shack. And it's taken us close to a year, and so we don't have enough space in the existing hole in the top corner of our shack, so we had to drill a brand new hole for the cable that is going to ultimately go to a temporary antenna for the packet radio. And we have several members in our club that utilize packet. We have a packet net each Sunday evening. And uh, this is going to be in a great location. Again, we're putting it back where it used to be on top of this mountain. So we drilled part of the hole through half of this insulated steel building. And then we got to switch around and go to the other side and finish drilling the hole over there. And of course, AC4DM and KY4EAR are taking care of this little bit of drilling. Of course, AC4DM knows in his head he's already got everything lined out. So the cool thing is the bit he's got on there came through. So he'll use that as a pilot, and then that way the two holes will line up. So just a little bit of pressure. And through he goes. And now we've got a brand new hole. This is going to allow for probably one or two antenna cables to come through. What you don't want to do with these insulated buildings is to create holes that you can't plug up easily and you don't want to create more holes than you need. So we are fitting some PVC in the hole. We also had to cut it to size, and then we needed to put some collars on each end so that the pipe itself won't try to come through on either side. So here we can see the boys uh, cutting it to size after we did some measurements. Little hacksaw action, which we don't get a lot on this channel, but here we go. So. And again, we're trying to make this long enough, the thinner tube, before we put the, uh, the uh, two ends on it so that it'll fit through the insulated panel and not much extra wiggle room at all. Now, uh, our other member here, KK4JPX, is doing some of the maintenance on the outside of the shack. And even though this is a brand new shack, what we like to do is put a coating of this uh, uh, plastic, if you will, or rubber, uh, paint on top of these uh, shacks. We've been doing this for two decades on the old shack, and it really helps uh, prevent weatheration. Uh, these metal building buildings don't need much, uh, but this is just preventative maintenance. And so he's rolling that on on this side of the building, and uh, he will go ahead and knock that out both on the very top side and on the wing on the bottom, and then he'll switch to the other side. So we're trying to get a lot of work done in one workday. Holes drilled, cables coming through, uh, painting, and uh, ultimately got to erect a new antenna for the packet system uh, on an old piece of tower. So we're just finishing up, uh, shaving off a little bit off that end cap so that it looks, uh, and uh, again, will prevent the pipe from actually coming through the hole that we've drilled in the side of the shack. So we're just cleaning that up a little bit. Now, this was something I'd never seen before. We tied a string to the stick, and then what this does is it'll prevent the piece of pipe that we have right now that doesn't have an end cap yet on that side from pulling through. What we're trying to do is give ourselves enough room on this side to put the first end cap on. And uh, here we go with the, uh, the uh, PVC prep and uh, the purple stuff, if you will. And then we're going to add the cement to that, which will create a bond and help the two pieces join together thermically. So uh, 
Don is going to add the cement here in just a second. The two elements work together to ensure the two pieces you're putting together will never come apart. Certainly won't come apart easily. And any plumber that's used this stuff is uh, very much aware of the two components. Now the end cap is on the other side of the string. So Don's going to reach back. Remember the string and that stick on the other side is to keep it from coming through. So he's going to uh, put a little bit of cement on the inside of this uh, cap that we've uh, that they uh, sawed, and then this will prevent it from going to the outside, and then we'll put a similar cap on the other side. And then we'll have our hole, and uh, we have uh, a nice piece of pipe going through there with very little wiggle room, so that again, we don't get insects and so forth in the shack. And then that rope is really no longer needed at this point, so we'll go ahead and bring that back in. So Don is pulling the rope once we remove the stick, Again, we've got one side. We'll actually have to go do the other side as well. Now, this is the packet radio that we pulled out of the old dilapidated shack, and it's been, again, sitting in AC4DM's uh, garage, basically, waiting for its new home. And it's just taken us a while because we had so much preventative maintenance on the tower and the, uh, the anchor cables. But this is the old piece of tower that we're going to use that had been used in a previous installation many, many years ago. We're going to use this temporarily. Eventually, we're going to put the antenna for the packet on the main tower, but we didn't have the time or somebody to climb this day. So we're just getting this piece of tower, which is about 18 to 20 feet long. This will get it up into the air enough that we can get the packet system on the air. Just make sure everything still works. And as you can see, Ben's coming off the ladder and he's got most of this side painted, just one little quadrant there on the bottom part of the roof. Now, of course, Don's got dozens of antennas either up in the rafters or sitting around the shack. He had a dual band antenna and uh, we're going to use this uh, for the packet radio. We actually don't need a dual band, but it was what was readily available. And he's attaching this to a piece of pipe and tightening the fittings down. And then the pipe will be uh, affixed or attached to the piece of tower that we have. So we're cobbling together bits and pieces that have either been sitting around the shack or in Don's garage, and then a little bit of electrical tape just to anchor and provide some strain relief on a little bit of the cable that we have coming off the antenna. Now, Don has a special connection on that antenna. A lot of antennas will use a VHF connection, and uh, he's, not, he's not really keen on those because of the potential for water intrusion and weatherization. So he'll strip that off, and he's actually got two eye uh, bolts, or not eye bolts, but eye nuts on the two ends, one for ground and one to actually go to the driving element, which we don't get to see very well here, but it's one of his customizations where you don't have to then worry about the weatherization. And now you can see that we're putting the steel pipe up against this piece of tower, and we're going to use hose clamps. I had never known personally how many uses there were for hose clamps. Man, we use them everywhere on this project and others that we've done over the last three years or so. So we've got the first hose clamp in place, and then we need to get the second one on the bottom end, and then AC4DM is going to tighten those down while KY4EAR holds it in place. And then we move up to the top, and this will uh, uh, attach this pipe, and it is not going anywhere. Uh, if you tighten this down nicely, it's just a great way to uh, to attach this steel pipe. Again, this is actually going to be temporary. And we've got a quick look at the roof on the other side now that Ben has already started on. And then at the end of our workday, he will have all of that painted. Now we're affixing a piece of pipe here to the tower. And this is because we're putting two pieces of coax together with the, uh, the connector, we're going to actually put that piece of coax, the two ends, up in the pipe again to prevent weather and water intrusion. So we're affixing this um, protective cover, if you will, onto the tower as well with a couple of more hose clamps. What do we got there? Four hose clamps at this point. There we go. We're attaching the two pieces of cable. And then this ultimately is going to go up into the protective cover used out of these PVC pipes pieces. Cap on the top to prevent water from coming down, and then we'll just stick it up in there, and that will protect the two ends of coax. And then we'll anchor the coax to the tower, a little bit of electrical tape with uh, Don's special little tie-off, and a little bit of, I think, foam up into the uh, pipe there to prevent bugs and 
that sort of thing from getting up in there. Prevent the dirt daubers from getting in there. And now we've got that pristine paint job on the roof of the shack. Now later we'll paint the sides as well, but again, this is just preventative maintenance. Now that gives you an, uh, an opportunity as I pan up, but if uh, down at the bottom, you'll see the dilapidated check that we've replaced. Uh, mold, mildew, the floor was uh, rotting out in the bottom, but you can see that temporary uh, tower is now placed. And then we're testing to see what the SWR and power is on the packet radio. And you can see the SWR on the bottom right is great. I think it was about 1.2 using that antenna. Here's our packet radio connected to the power supply, the IOTA, and uh, a nice little Anderson power pole uh, distribution. Now this is a repeater we put together in a previous video series and we haven't used it for close to a year and a half. We had hoped to get this on the air pretty soon after we built it, but with everything going on at the abandoned repeater site, now the Monticello repeater site, we've had to do so much maintenance. Well, this is the day we get it on the air. And KY4CKP had purchased a duplexer or biplexer, if you will, for 140 uh, and uh, four, uh, two meters and 70 centimeters. And we're gonna have the antenna at the very top of the tower that's dual banded, it's a Comet GP3, that it, we're gonna disconnect it from the tuner and then we're going to connect the antenna to this uh, biplexer, if you will, from Comet and on the top side. And then we're going to connect the packet radio uh, to the two meter side. And we're going to connect the other repeater to the 440 side. Now, this is not necessarily um, uh, the best for both repeaters. You're going to have some loss, but in our case and for our area, we're not looking for a lots of power, and it works just fine. We actually have almost the identical setup at the 88 side, our other repeater, and it works wonderfully. And then we'll just kind of wrap things up, get things connected, and test them out. And according to AC40M, the, uh, the GMRS repeater there worked wonderfully. So for those that have asked to use the repeater, it is now on the air. And that'll wrap it up this week. We've got two repeaters, a packet and a repeater on the system, a new antenna temporarily put up, painted the shack, and a couple of other little maintenance activities. And this is the kind of things that you want to get involved in with your club. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Thanks for watching. And 73.